What's going on everybody? Hideous Thoughts coming at you with another Black Desert Online video. This is episode 26 of my Black Desert console series and uh, I think I'm going to break this down into three parts. So there will be three parts to this video and what we're going to discuss is we're going to go over all the things you need to know about uh, how to train horses and how to catch horses, how to breed horses and eventually we're going to move our way through um, to Corsa horses and Dream horses. Now there's a couple of things that you need to know. Actually, guys, you know what? Before we get into that, let's just take a minute to say thank you to all of you guys. We are we are, we have surpassed 100 subscribers. Like, you know, I do, I'm only really releasing videos twice a week, and I'm just like, I'm checking this out, and every day I'm seeing the numbers climb. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. 100, 107 subs. So I just want to say to all of you guys, you guys are the real MVP. Um, you know, you guys are helping me, giving giving me the uh, the motivation and the energy in to to keep making these videos. So thank you so much. Um, you know what, guys? We hit 107 subs in less than a year. Um, I want to push for a thousand subs. So here's what I want you guys to do. Like all these videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell button for notifications on future videos because if you don't hit that bell button, you're not going to know when I post videos. And I want you to share the shit out of my channel in your Discord groups, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. I want you to share my channel and get this content out there because my next goal is 1,000 subs. I never really cared about the subs, but I feel like it would be a pretty cool milestone to hit a thousand subs and I might do something special for it. I might do a giveaway or something like that. Something to mark a huge milestone. I mean, 107 subs, guys, for me is massive. I never even thought that I would get 107 subs. But if we can do that, I'm going to do something special. So anyways, enough about my shit. Let's get into the video. Now... Uh, there's a couple of things. What I'm going to do is I just want you guys to bear in mind that I am not a like professional horse trainer. I know some shit. Don't get me wrong. I know some shit, but I'm not like a professional. So if there is any of you professionals out there that know something that I don't, or if I get something slightly wrong, or if I miss something, then, uh, Hey, I'm just giving you a warning that uh, it may happen. But anyways, here's what you need to do. Because we're going to start off with how to catch a horse. And there's and I wanted to do this because it's quite basic, but there's a lot of people who don't know how to do this. And I feel like it's a good skill to have just in case you ever decide that you need to catch a horse. So as with all life skills, you need to have your life skill character. Now, what character I'm using, I'm using my shy that I use for my gathering. Uh, I've just um, started turning this into my horse training character. You can see I'm at professional one. Uh, so the reason I'm using my gathering character for training horses is because when you're gathering, you're using a lot of energy. Once your energy has run out, um, I like to uh, AFK train horses overnight or something like that so that I can refill my energy. And then when my energy is replenished, I can go back and do some gathering again. So that's my concept behind using my gathering character as my horse trainer. So moving on, once you're at, with all life skills, you want to have your, uh, you can see here, I've only got a plus one silver embroiders clothes, which just gives 10% mount XP. Now, um, this doesn't really apply to catching horses. You, this helps just when you're training horses, for example. So, um, you don't really have to worry too much about that. But I mean, it does help if you're training horses, then you're going to want to get some kind of XP boost. Again, I've only got a plus one, nothing too special. Um, and I don't even have like the premium uh, mount training outfit as well. So if you do have the... Uh, actually, no, we'll, we'll get into that later. I don't want to jump too far ahead. Okay. When you're catching horses as well, things like the suit tea or the seafood cron meal or something like that, that's just going to give you a little bit of a, a life skill boost. They're things that you can do as well. Okay, guys, so let's get into it. So there's a couple of things that you're going to want to use. 
First one is going to be lump of raw sugar. You don't necessarily need this when I started um, training horses. I never used this. I just started using it because um, it kind of just made things a little bit easier. Like you can catch a horse without this, but over time it's just easier to use it. And the other thing is the rope. You need to have a rope to catch a horse. Well, I mean, you can go up to a horse and you can drop some sugar there and you can try and catch it that way, but it's a lot harder to do um, without the horse running away. So get yourself some raw sugar and get yourself some rope. Now, if you want to know how to identify a horse, there's two sites that I use. One of them is this somethinglovely.net slash horses. And um, this here gives you some information. Like it's probably the easiest one to see about the coats of a horse. For example, you can click on tier, uh, tier four, tier three. And, uh, and the other site that I use is uh, this grumpy green cricket site. And this is more for like breeding. I, I would use this one more for breeding because you're looking at the coats of the horse and you're looking at the stats here and what you want to, what sort of horse you want to get. So we'll, we'll get into that one in a second, but let's um, take a look at this. So you can see this here, 5B, you can see the pattern of this horse and everything. Now, if I come up, uh, where did it go? Over here. Okay, so you can see that that is this horse right here. Now, where I am in the world, I'm just going to tell you guys one of my uh, areas that I use to catch tier five horses is up here uh, near Shere Khan uh, Necropolis. So that's right up up here. You can see Duvan Croons over there. All right. So that's this is the area I come to catch these tier five horses or one of the areas that I have. So what you want to do is you want to equip your rope. Okay. So you can see now uh, I've got the rope in my hand. Now what I would do is I would come up to the horse and I would try and ho hover the, um, I don't know what you would call that. Anyways, hover, hover it over the, uh, aim, aim at the, aim at the horse. Let's just, that's easy. Okay. After you aim at the horse, what you want to do is you, you don't want to get too close because the horse is going to run away. So. Now it's kind of dark, so it's hard to see, but let's see if I can make this easy for you guys. All right, go into the light. Okay, so after you've aimed at the horse, that's it, keep going into the light so we can all see what the hell's going on. After you've aimed at the horse, you're gonna press R1. You're gonna play this little mini game here and you can see this symbol come up. Now the horse is gonna rear up like that and all you gotta do is you just gotta mash the circle button um, if you're on PlayStation and you're just gonna mash it until the time runs out two seconds now the first time I did this I just kind of sat here. I was like, what am I doing and uh, And I just kind of sat here expecting the horse to get closer thinking that every time I played that mini game That the horse I was gonna actually be pulling the horse closer and closer to myself That's not the case guys. I sat there for a little while the first time I did this uh, Trying to figure out what the hell I was meant to do after you've done the mini game, you're going to hold the left thumbstick forward and you're going to walk towards the horse. Just like that. And okay, so once you've reached the horse, you're going to have the option to mount it or to uh, use an item. For the sake of this right now, I'm just going to try and mount the horse. And okay, so you can see that I failed. Sometimes the horse will let you do it. Remember, I said when I first started doing this, I never used sugar. I just j mounted the horse and most of the time I was able to do it. If you, uh, just to make your life easier, this is why we're using sugar. So now what I've done is because I failed, I have to equip another rope. And I'm going to walk up to that horse again. I'm going to do the same thing again. Play that little mini game. And I'm going to walk forward. But he reared up. So you got to do this mini game again. For 10 seconds. A lot of the time, this is pretty simple. But sometimes you get a horse that's really stubborn and you've got to mash that shit. I'm telling you. All right. Okay, so moving forward, holding that left thumbstick down and... So you can see the first time I did this, I could walk up to the horse and I didn't have to do this this many, this many times. Sometimes it's quite simple and you can just walk up to the horse and other times you have to do that mini game a hundred times. Okay, so now that we're at the horse, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press triangle once. Don't hold it down, just tap it. And we're gonna to go to use item. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to raw sugar. You can use one, 
and you can try your luck or you can use two or you can use three I will generally just use like two or three depending on how I'm feeling on the day after I've used two then I'm gonna try and mount the horse and you can see it didn't like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna equip another rope and I'm gonna try it again so it's just like it's just a matter of being a little bit lucky and hopefully your aim is better than mine and you don't miss all right there we go so we're just gonna walk forward So because I failed on two sugars, what I'm just going to use is I'm going to do three sugars this time. You can start on one and then go two and then go three. Um, it that's that's like a way that I do it sometimes. I'll start on one sugar because m less is more sometimes, and it just saves yourself money over time as well. So after you've given it that sugar, then you can try and get up on there. All right, and cool. So there you go. So we've mounted that horse. Now what you can do is you see when I'm riding this horse here, it's pretty slow right so what you need to do is you need to take this horse to a stable otherwise um, you'll end up losing the horse if you don't check the horse into a stable you're gonna end up losing it so what I would do is because I don't want to be riding around on a slow ass horse is I'm gonna get on my own horse and I'm gonna set myself a waypoint to the nearest stable Okay, and you can see now that horse is going to follow me. Even though, guys, sometimes it looks like it's not following you, trust me, that horse is going to follow you. So you can pretty much run to this stable as fast as you can, and that horse will follow you. I promise you, it, you will not lose it. So just run to, the run to the stable, and this is just all about getting this shit done as fast as possible. You don't want to be s spending hours and hours running backwards and forwards um, to stables and stuff, so... Um, you're just going to follow this waypoint all the way through and then you've got to check that horse into the stable. Now, I'm, I'm hoping that I have enough spaces in this stable, actually. We'll see what happens. Alright guys, so we're here at the stable. You do have to wait just a minute for that horse just to catch up to you. But um, like I said, as long as that horse isn't killed, you it will follow you to the stable. So all you need to do now is you need to go to the stable keeper and you're going to go into stable and it's going to say, you can register a mount here. So we're going to come um, down here and you can see this captured horse. You can click X on it to register it. Now you can also see our mount status. We've got zero of five horses checked into this stable here. I don't care about the name. Um, you can change the name if you want to keep the horse, but I don't care about it, so I'm not going to bother with that. So now what you can, if you do is you click on this horse and you can see all its stats over here. You can see it's got one breed available. This is a female tier five horse. You can see the skills that this has because this is a level nine. So when you're catching horses as well, the level changes. You can catch level 10 horses, level 11 ho horses, level like four. The levels are going to be random and um, a horse, it, it can come with a bunch of skills. So this, this has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skills for this level nine horse, which really isn't too bad at all, actually, if, if you're asking, if you, if, to be honest with you guys. Eight skills on a level nine horse is pretty good. So that's how you catch a horse. Now, what we want to do is we're going to talk about training a horse. And there's two things that you need to know about training a horse. The first one is we've already covered the um, the items that you need. You want to get yourself some kind of trainers, uh, the silver embroidered trainer clothes, which you can buy in the central market if you come into armor and you come into functional clothes and it's the top one there, trainer's clothes. Now, I've only got a um, plus one 
And the reason I only had a plus one is because the trainer's clothes don't really go on the market uh, too often. There's, uh, here you go, a plus three there. It's the, actually the first time I've seen a plus three up there, so I'm just going to grab one of those. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Um, so you grab yourself one of those. Now, what you can do as well, if you want it, you can come into the pearl shop and you can come into apparel, I believe it is, and out, is it outfit? No, it's costume. Come into costume and the uh, it's the, the Venia riding attire, which you can see there gives you a 20% mount XP. Um, so there's that. Now, you don't need that. You can go to the, I think it's the luxury vendor and you can buy uh, a riding outfit and you can use a premium outfit coupon on it and you can turn it into a premium outfit for all you free to play players who don't want to buy Pearl Shop items. That's a way that you can get that riding attire um, in for your premium costume. The next thing as well with training horses is if you have a, I don't think I have in my inventory here. Um, if you have a, a, uh, a horse outfit, I'm just going to show you guys in the, in the, uh, pearl shop so you can see horse gear. So if you have one of these, one of these outfits, it can be any one. These give you a 10% chance of learning additional skills. Okay. So if you've got a premium outfit, you can buy them in the uh, central market as well as a pearl shop item. You can come pearl item and you come into mount. A lot of people are listing like pretty often people are listing horse, horse gear outfits. So you just keep an eye out for those and you can buy one for silver for again for you free to play players. There's two things that you need to know about training horses. When you are training a horse, let's say I want to train this tier five horse. Okay. If I was to come in here to this stable, I'm going to check this one in and I want to take this one out. If I was, if I wanted to keep this horse for breeding, what you want to do is you want to train it manually like this. You want to put your premium outfit gear on there. Um, so you get a 10% chance to learn additional skills and you want to just train it manually. What you can do is you can go into the world map and you can set yourself uh, path okay I'm just gonna set a way like waypoint here so if you if you press square on the map like this it's gonna set a waypoint if you hold down L2 and square it's gonna make it green now what this is is an auto loop that's an auto path um, like waypoint auto loop so that you can do it for AFK if you've got some carrots in your inventory just here they don't need to be in the horses inventory you put them in your own inventory and what that's going to do is um, when the horses uh, stamina runs out it's going to automatically feed it a carrot so that it replenishes it now that is how you would train a horse if you want to keep it um, for example if you have a tier 8 horse and you want to get maximum amount of skills uh, you would do it like this if you wanted to um, have a horse to breed with your main horse, for example, this is how you would do it. The other way that you can train horses is by getting yourself a wagon. Now, the wagon that I use for training horses would um, be the merchant wagon. Merchant wagon, you can put four horses on at a time and uh, it's got pretty good uh, like durability, I guess durability is the word. Okay. And putting horses on a wagon is good for if you are doing imperial training. Now, in, what imperial training is, is you can hand the horse over to the NPC and you can get silver for it and you can get um, these seals. Now the seals that you get, I'll show you what they look like. Um, they're basically, uh, let's go into a Vilia storage. Okay, so if we come down to here, you can see I've got these golden seals for Imperial training. Now, with these seals, you can hand them in for various items. So you can hand them 50 of them in for the Grand Via uh, riding gear, the armor for the horse, which at the moment is the best that we have in the game. 
Now, the other things you can hand these in for are black things like black, black essence, which you use to make your viper crystals. Very, very, very good uh, crystals that you use on pretty much any character build in the game. You can also use them for trainer clothes, um, course of training reward boxes, um, and the storm and the fighting spirit horse gear box, which are pretty kind of outdated now. You can also hand them in for the swaying wind shards and the rumbling earth shards that you that you use to make the Krogdalo stone. So I personally wouldn't do that because it, it is expensive. You need 25 of each of those shards to make one Krogdalo stone. So that's 50 seals. I would rather use the seals on, if I'm using 50 seals, I'd rather buy myself some of that Grand Veer uh, riding gear. So that's what you can um, use the seals for. You also get, when you're handing the uh, the horses into the Imperial um, training, you also get, I think it's 50% of the horse's value in silver. So you do get some silver from it as well. And when you're handing in the horse for Imperial training, it, it goes heavily towards your um, training, horse training uh, skill XP. So I'll show you guys how to do that right now. So what you want to do is you want to come into the stable. You want to check that horse in. Now, to do Imperial Training, the horse has to be level 15. Okay, so we've got a level 9. So what I would do is I would AFK train this horse overnight um, on a wagon or something like that. But if I was going to do Imperial Training, I wouldn't put one horse on a wagon. I would go and catch three more horses the same and I would put them on the wagon and I would train four at a time. If you guys are specifically after tier 5 horses, a good thing to do is just catch a horse, hand it in, switch servers, go and catch another horse, switch servers, go and catch another horse, and just repeat and repeat. Okay, so what I would do is you would come, click on the horse, and you would come down here to Imperial Horse Delivery. And you can see here, this is a tier 8 horse, uh, level 30. I would never ever hand a tier 8 horse into Imperial Delivery because its value is too high. So you can see the horse will be supplied to the Imperial House for 77 million silver. You'll get golden seals in return. Okay, no, I do not want to do that, but that's how you would hand that one in. You can see if I click on this level 9 horse, it doesn't give me the option here for Imperial Delivery. It needs to be level 15 minimum. Now what I want to do is this level um, 8 level... This tier 8 horse right here, I bred this one, uh, I leveled this one up specifically for breeding. I've, I've bred it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to register at the market. This is how you guys can sell a horse if you want. So you register at the market. You need to make sure that it's got no gear on it at all and nothing in its inventory when you go to do this. And the horse also needs to be fully recovered. So you can just recover the horse. And after you've done that, you can register it at the market. Now you can see here that I'm going to sell this horse for 154 million silver. This is why I wouldn't hand that tier 8 horse into Imperial Delivery because you can get a tier 5 horse in, you can get a bunch of seals for doing it and um, the money difference is just, it's not worth it. Losing 75 million silver uh, on a horse, it's not worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to register that horse at the market and that's going to go in there. Now, if you press R1 and you scroll across to the horse market and you can see the all the horses that are here. If you want to go by tier, you can go by tier. You can look at see if there's dream horses on the market and, uh, and, and everything else. So if you are looking for horses, you can see there's another tier right there. Let's look at my registrations. Okay, it's still there. So that's how you would do that. So just quickly guys, um, there's one thing I want to cover just quickly, the difference between training a horse um, individually and training a horse on a wagon. If you are, the reason why I said if you are, if you want the horse to be for breeding um, or if you want the horse to be your personal horse, train it individually and if it's for imperial delivery, train it on a wagon. Now the reason why I said that is because if you train a horse individually, it has a higher chance to learn skills than what it would if you trained it on a wagon. Horses that get trained on a wagon generally end up with less skills than those who are being trained individually. 
Okay, this has been tested a bunch of times and it's worked out that it's better to train horses individual, individually if you want the the horse to be for a specific reason like breeding. If you are um if you are breeding a horse, more skills is better. The more skills a horse has, the better it is for breeding because uh the horse that is the new horse that you get has a higher chance to learn more skills. So that's why it's important to have a lot of skills if you're breeding horses. Um, but you guys can take that as you want it. That's that's the that's what I that's what I believe. That's what I've been told to be true. So that's the way that I do it. If you're training horses uh, for imperial delivery, you don't really care about skills. All you're doing is you just want to smash out as many as many horses as you can and breed them as fast as you can. The difference um, between training horses individually and on a wagon, you, on the wagon you get less experience. Um, let's say you get less experience per hour, like let's let's go per hour, okay? Um, than what you would if you were training a horse individually. However, you're training four horses at a time, so you still actually end up better off training the four horses at once on a wagon, even though you get less XP because you're doing four at a time, it still works out faster than training four horses individually. So if you're doing it for Imperial delivery, wagon is what you need to do. Chuck four horses on there. And I'll just show you guys as well. If, if you are, let's say you, you've got your wagon. Okay. And you come in here and you've got, and you've got your horse and you've got, You've got four horses and, and everything, and let's say that your stable is full. What you can do, if your stable's full and you need to get your wagon in here with your four horses or whatever, you can click on the horse and you can come into remote collection, and that's going to override the that's going to override the limit in your stable. Now this is a little trick as well for you guys who are using wagons to store items. For example, if you've got a bunch of items and you've run and you're low on storage space, you can get some wagons. What I like to do is is once I've trained my wagons and they've run out of durability and I have no more use for them, I put them into my stable. I fill them with items and then I just remote collect and they can sit in my stable full of items and it's free storage for you guys. So there's a little trick there for you if you want to get some extra storage. Remote collect the wagons and you've got some free storage. So that's a little that's a little tip little trick there for you guys what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap up this video i was going to talk about breeding but this one's getting a little bit long so i'm going to put breeding into part two of this video so in part two we're going to talk about breeding and coarser and coarser horse training and in part three we're going to go over how to make a dream horse so that's going to be it for this video guys like this video if it's helped you if you've learned a little bit subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that bell button so you get notified when i post new videos so that's it for this video guys thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next one